My top 10 most underrated movies coming at you in 3, 2, Hey folks, it's the blind guy here and I'm going to be coming out with some top 10 lists and the first one is top 10 underrated movies. I figured this would be helpful for people who are looking for movies that might just be a little underrated. Now what this list is not is a list of extremely obscure movies nobody's ever heard of that end up being a good movie. I don't believe that's as helpful. What I focused on are movies that you've probably heard of all of them. Some of them are actually really famous, but I just don't believe they get the credit they deserve. So sometimes it's a movie that's in a trilogy, for instance, and it's looked down upon when I think it actually deserves more credit in within that trilogy itself. And so that's how I looked at this list. And so without further ado, here we go. Here is number 10. In a file with bars. The Russians. Yes, number 10 is 2008's Burn After Reading, directed by the Coen Brothers and starring George Clooney, Brad Pitt, John Malkovich, Francis McDermott, amongst others. It's got quite the uh, cast. And this is classic Coen Brothers, but I don't believe it gets enough credit within their filmography. I think that this is one of their better movies. It takes a, in their classic style, it takes an everyday situation and then just turns it on its head, turns it on its head, twists it, twists it until pretty soon. Nobody knows what's going on, but it's driven by its characters and its dialogue. They don't always end their movies, tie them up real well, but this one, I think the way they do it, it works. It ends very abruptly, but I think the way they do it in this movie actually works really well. It's got extremely funny dialogue, but it's not over the top like Big Lebowski or Raising Arizona. I believe it's it's in the middle, closer to Fargo. Maybe a little bit goofier than Fargo, but I just think it's it's a really a fun movie to watch. And I just don't know why it doesn't get the credit I believe it deserves. I, I think it's quite entertaining, and everybody I've shown it to has, has really enjoyed it. So if you get a chance, check out Burn After Reading. I think you will really enjoy it. Yes, number nine is Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Now hang on, hang on. Before you have an aneurysm, hear me out. I believe that compared to the original trilogy, this one is underrated. I believe it's almost become cool in recent years to hate on Return of the Jedi. And I get it. It's completely because of these little guys right here. But despite the fact that the Ewoks are a little goofy... Star Wars has some goofy things in it. It's supposed to be a bit of an, an adventure, a fun time. So the Ewoks have never actually bothered me as much as they seem to bother a lot of other people. And I think the hatred towards the Ewoks is almost more of an overcorrection because of Jar Jar Binks and characters like that, which I totally get. I hate Jar Jar Binks as well. But I just remember, I've never really thought the Ewoks were on the same level. They're goofy, they're funny, but they do add some fun a fun element to the movie and I guess you could have a planet where you have little native nomadic teddy bears that want to fight stormtroopers so that doesn't really bother me that much the scenes in Jabba's palace are great the throne room scene at the end of the movie where Luke and Darth Vader are dueling and having this force battle mental and emotional battle going back and forth I think is the best some of the best work in the entire Star Wars trilogy. And it goes without saying, I, I obviously am going to believe the original trilogy is the best, so the other Star Wars movies I'm just not even considering. But in the original trilogy, I think the, the throne room scenes with the Emperor and Darth Vader and Luke are just fantastic in this movie. Um, the special effects are amazing. And, of course, you have bonus points for this right here. I just believe that Return of the Jedi is is underrated as far as the original three Star Wars movies go. 
And I'm going to be coming out with a movie of A New Hope versus Return of the Jedi. Which of those two movies I believe is the better movie. So look forward to that. And now on to number eight. All right, number eight is The Family Man from 2000, starring Nicolas Cage and Taya Leone, and music by Danny Elfman. This movie focuses on a Wall Street broker who's given a glimpse of what would have happened if he had married his high school, I think she's a high school or college sweetheart, and then he gets transported into that life of being a family man. This movie is so underrated, and it, and it just does not get the credit it deserves. It is playing at a much higher level than people think. If you watch it and just watch the way the music is used in the movie, the acting's great. I'm not always a big fan of Nicolas Cage, but he's great in this movie. He's funny. He's serious. It has some sad moments. Um, maybe I'm being sentimental because I have a little girl and a little boy just like he does in the movie, but I just think this movie is criminally underrated. I think it is so fantastic. There's a scene in it where he is standing out in the snow as it's gently falling and you have the great Danny Elfman music like only Danny Elfman can do with a with a snowstorm and that scene is just so great. Um, the only thing I have against the movie is I don't believe it ends correctly and I'm going to actually be doing a movie or a video at some point of how I would fix the ending of this movie. I think it could have been done better. But be that as it may, this movie is so fantastic. I watch it almost every year around Christmas time because it takes place around Christmas. And it's just a fantabulous movie. So if you have not seen it, definitely check it out. Watch it with some friends so you guys can laugh together. And just think about how, how well it's actually crafted and how well it's made. It's not just a goofy comedy or even just a romantic comedy. It just has so much going for it. Check out The Family Man. From 2000. On to number seven. And coming at number seven, we have the 1977 animated classic, The Hobbit. And I'll be honest, the new trilogy under the same name has driven this movie way up, in my opinion. This movie is also underrated just because of the fact that it tells a very faithful adaptation of the hobbit and i mean it, it takes some liberties here and there especially with how many of the dwarves end up dying at the end is kind of interesting but the movie is just it's the right length it paces itself so much better than the new trilogy does and just john houston as gandalf is fantastic in this movie every time i see him in an old movie that's all i think of is gandalf from the 1977 the hobbit if you can get a chance to check this out definitely do so um, it's fabulous. Uh, kids love it. It's just a great, a great uh, rendition of The Hobbit. So check it out if you get the opportunity. That's the 1977 animated The Hobbit. And coming in at number six, we have 1991's The Rocketeer, starring Billy Campbell, Jennifer Connelly, Alan Arkin, and Timothy Dalton. This movie is fantastic. If you have uh, teenage kids that want to watch a fun movie, um, it's a Disney movie that I just believe is, is so underrated. It's one of the last movies I can remember that gave me the Indiana Jones adventure feel, but also could still have emotion and story and was paced correctly. The Rocketeer is just so much fun. Of course, it gets bonus points for having Jennifer Connelly in it. It's always going to get bonus points in my opinion. But the movie's just, I mean, the bad guys are great. There's mobsters. There's FBI agents. It takes place in a great time period. The effects have held up fairly well for being as old as it, for being over 30 years old. And I just, this movie is so much fun. And it's one that actually a lot of people today haven't seen or haven't even heard of. So I think it's it's one that you can surprise somebody with. It should be on Disney Plus because it's a Disney movie. But that's the 1991, The Rocketeer. You will not be disappointed. This movie is a lot of fun. Go and check it out. Number six, The Rocketeer. My number five is 2014's Fury, starring Brad Pitt, Logan Larman, and Shia LaBeouf. 
Now, this movie got some attention when it came out, but I, I put it on the list because I think it's a lot better movie than it gets credit for today. You don't hear it brought up a lot when talking about war movies, but I, I absolutely love this movie. I saw it multiple times in the theater. I went with my dad once, who actually understands tanks and things, and he thought it was a fantastic movie as well. The movie is not your typical war movie. This movie is very focused, small scale, about the men in the tank and their relationships, and particularly Logan's character named Norman and Brad Pitt's character and how he becomes a bit of a mentor towards Norman and at the beginning of the movie they're very they have a very adversarial relationship and then it grows over time through the movie the movie's about the men in the tank it's not a large scale war movie and i just believe it's so great the acting's fantastic the dialogue's great it's it's just a fantastic movie it's a great score um, the only issue i have with it is during the last battle there seems to be a time lapse thing going on that's not very well portrayed by the director it, it goes from light to dark very quickly and i think he's trying to say that a lot of time has gone by but the movie doesn't do a good job of conveying that and that's the only issue i've ever had with the movie um, there's some debate as to whether the last battle is realistic or not i don't know it's probably not but it's not done in a way that's that's over the top um you know there's machine gun murphy and stories of one tank holding off a lot of men so the, the movie's just, it's a great movie. Anytime it's on, I'll watch it. I'll watch it at my home theater. It's got great sound, just great pacing. It's one of my absolute favorite movies. And it, not, I don't think it's just because newer movies are so terrible now. I think this is legitimately a well-made, well-acted, well-told story. And I, I think anyone who who is interested in World War II movies needs to see this movie. It's, it's that good. So number five is 2014's Fury. And our number four is 1998's The Prince of Egypt, starring Val Kilmer, Sandra Bullock, uh, Jeff Goldblum's in this, Martin Short, Steve Martin. This movie has a lot of great names in it. This is when DreamWorks was really starting to challenge Disney and, and actually, in my opinion, stick it to them in this movie. This is... Also, in my opinion, by far the best telling of the Moses story out of Exodus. And I, it's actually, it's, it's extremely faithful to the biblical um, narrative on the story, except for the fact that we're not told in the Bible that it's Ramesses and that they've telescoped the story so that Moses isn't as old as he is in the Bible when he comes back. But other than that, it's really pretty faithful. Um, it's got great uh, voice acting. The music is done by Hans Zimmer, and the lyrics to the songs are done by Stephen Schwartz, which is just a dream team if you had to do an animated movie. Um, it's got, uh, it's just got a great, a great telling of the story. It accepts the story as true, and I believe that's important for telling the Exodus story. That's a mistake that Gods and Kings makes by Ridley Scott, is it can't decide whether it wants to treat the Exodus story as true or as a myth and so it tries to straddle both and then it just ends up making everybody angry I think if you're going to tell a biblical story uh, assume that it is true and you're going to your audience is going to enjoy it better and uh, you don't have to believe it if you don't want to but the story is going to come across as much more genuine and just it just makes for a better biblical story the the story the the garbage movie Noah with Russell Crowe did the same thing it just didn't stay true to the biblical story and I just often have thought, well, then why would you tell a biblical story if you're not going to stay true to the subject matter? And so this one this one just knocks it out of the park. I love The Prince of Egypt. Um, like I said, just a great score, great, greatly paced. It's just an awesome movie. Great for kids. Um, the Passover portion of it can be a little scary for little kids, but if you have kids that are 8, 9, 10 years old, they're going to love this movie. It's so great. And it's one of the last truly animated movies i think it has actually a little bit of cgi used in it possibly but most of it's truly animated and that's right when that was starting to go away so it's just a a, a very underrated movie that's number four the prince of egypt from 1998 on to number three we are to the top three in my opinion the top three underrated movies 
given my criteria. And this one is 20, 2007's Fracture, starring Rosamund Pike, um, Ryan Gosling, and Anthony Hopkins. This movie is... I had not heard of this when I first watched it years ago. And it's an interesting... It's such an interesting movie because... Anthony Hopkins murders his wife. You were told it's him. You were shown that he does it or he attempts to murder his wife. And so you know what has happened even before we get to all the courtroom drama. And that's what's so fascinating about the movie is then he tries to get off for murder or attempted murder. murder. And the play between interplay between he and um, Ryan Gosling's character is great in this movie. I just think this one is, is totally underrated. It keeps your attention. It's got some twists to it that are not crazy forced like a lot of movies will do. They just they're very natural twists that that a lot of people go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't I didn't see that coming. And so this movie's just it's a great movie. It's it's like you guys know that pacing's really important to me. It doesn't get over its skis, it doesn't uh, move too quickly, it doesn't move too slowly. It's just the right the right amount of goodness in a movie. I think this movie's great to watch. So definitely check it out. It's fun to, even if you've seen it, it's fun to watch with somebody who hasn't because I guarantee you they have no idea what happens in this movie. They've probably never even heard of it. It could be one of the more obscure movies on this list, but it's just, it's a great movie. And so um, check it out. That is 2007's Fracture. Number two, the penultimate underrated movie, in my opinion, is 1974's Black Christmas, starring Olivia Hussey, Margot Kidder, and John Saxon, and directed by Bob Clark. Yes, the A Christmas Story Bob Clark, that director, who, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated directors of all time, especially given how influential this movie was. And a Christmas story. But this movie, in my opinion, should be regarded as the first slasher film. Um, often that's given to Psycho, which I don't believe truly fits the model of a slasher film. Or Halloween, which actually came out after this movie. This movie also came out before A Stranger Calls, even though they both do the old where is the call coming from trick. But this movie did it first. This movie also has far more of a story to it than the slasher movies that came out after it. It's got drama. It's It's got some red herrings. You're never quite sure who the killer is until towards the end. And of course, Olivier Hussey is just fantastic in this movie. It's just, it's, and Bob Clark does a great job of playing off of the Christmas time atmosphere with the neon lights and the snow and the cold. And it was actually filmed in very cold temperatures at times. And it's just, it's an extremely underrated movie. It's everyone I've shown shown this movie to, if they're horror movie fans, they just think, man, where has this movie been? It's It spawned two remakes slash sequels that were just absolute abominations. Do not bot, waste your time watching those. But the 1974 Black Christmas is so hard to beat as far as slasher movies go. It's not gratuitously violent or anything like that. It's just it just hits on all cylinders. Um, it, it's just an extremely memorable movie. I, I love this movie so much. It's it's worth getting a copy of um, the trailer I'm showing here. The color has not been preserved very well. The the actual movie's far more colorful than than it looks here. It's been very muted in this trailer. So just um, check it out. It, it is it is worth your time. That is Black Christmas from 1974, directed by. The late, great Bob Clark. Rest in peace, Bob. So, can you guess what it is? My number one most underrated movie, in my opinion, given my criteria, came out in 2000. Stars Dennis Quaid, Jim Caviezel, and Elizabeth Mitchell. If you haven't guessed it already, it is Frequency. This movie is so underrated. I believe that it achieves greatness by just stacking up a whole bunch of good and not having really any weaknesses. Dennis Quaid, good actor, not great. Jim Caviezel, 
good actor, probably closer to great than Dennis Quaid, but the story's good, the acting's good, the pacing's good, the twists are good, and if you stack enough good together, you end up with a great movie. I think this is a fantastic movie. I remember I watched it not knowing much about it. I thought it was just about a guy who talked to his father 30 years in the past who had passed away over a radio and that was a good thing that I didn't know much about it because it just threw curveball after curveball at me I then watched it with friends I believe we were at it was like prom night or something we watched it after the dance and they all thought it was so fantastic you know take my advice if you're going to watch this don't watch the trailer I think the trailer gives away too much I'm probably giving away too much by having it playing here but just check it out Go into it not the less you know about it, the better off you're going to be going into it because it's going to throw some some really great twists at you that are very natural and logical from from what's happening in the movie, and it's just one of those kind of messing with time continuum type movies that really pulls it off well. Though I mean, obviously, none of these movies are going to be perfect because time travel just causes all kinds of contradictions and paradoxes. But be that as it may, this one does it really well. And I just I cannot believe this movie doesn't get more credit than it than it does already. It, it's such a fantastic movie. So that is my number one uh, frequency uh, from 2000. It let me know in the comments. Are there any movies that should not be on the list? On the list? Are there any movies you believe should be on this list? I've got some other movies. I'll probably do another top ten. Um, maybe it's going to be from uh, 20 to 11 or something like that. But just let me know what you think. Did I miss something? Or am I way off base? I just just keep it respectful and we'll uh we can always have a good conversation. So thank you for your time. I had fun making this, and thank you so much for your support of my channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye bye.